Hello, and welcome to the Reeton Entertainment Podcast, episode 449. I am your host, Nathan Reeton Spruth, and joining me this week, we have above average uh, Andrew Rowe McFain. Uh, do we have titles now? I, I, I was watching an old uh, like episode of wrestling, and there's a, a wrestler that was like above average Mike Sanders. And I'm like, that is the worst. <laughs> Slightly above average. Uh, so I thought it would, I thought it was funny. And there's another guy who was named Just Joe. Who's this guy? Oh, just Joe. I don't know. Uh, He's some... acceptable. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so I, I thought it would be a funny intro. Uh, anyway, uh, let me let me ask you: Where can we find you, Aroa? You can go to Aroa dot website. Mm. Uh, it it should should just load the list of links. You got all them links. You got lots of lots of links. Now now protected by battery backup anymore. Yeah yeah. Now we're protected by battery backup. But I wrote that website was what it was kind of stupid of me to do it. The well, I know why I did it, <laughs> but like the the website itself isn't actually hosted locally. Uh, it's it's hosted on uh neo cities but the way that i had it set up before it was proxying through my home pc oh good uh so if the well through my the home server and it, if if the server went down then the website went down even though there was no reason for that uh so it doesn't do that anymore because it, it, i i had it that way because of mastodon but I don't have. I don't think I have my Mastodon instance running anymore. So, because uh, I'm all, I'm all in on Blue Sky. Uh, so that's yeah, good. It should work, even if the battery dies, that's... which it shouldn't. You know. Yeah, yeah. Sh- it shouldn't. It um, you... get like get, should get like twenty minutes of of uptime. Yeah, that's so. usually. I think I timed it on mine, and I think it was about half an hour. And by timed it on mine. I mean, I was sleeping in my bedroom when the battery, like when the power went out once, and I was too lazy to get up and turn off my computers. Uh, <laughs> and so it just beeped for like 20 minutes until it, it ended up dying. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so we were protected by battery backup. That means the podcast shouldn't go down too because we had some complaints about another one of the podcasts hosted on your on your server that was uh, not working. And it's like, hey, I can't yep. listen to the old episodes of this. And we're like, yeah, yeah, Roa's is going to fix it. And then you spent $200 on a battery backup. Mm-hmm. So do you, do you know how much wattage your, your server takes basically idle? Uh, generally, it, it sits somewhere between 250 and 300 watts. Oof. So <laughs> it's quite a bit. <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a fifteen hundred watt hour battery, I think. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it should yeah. be fine. It it it. Yeah. Most of the power outages at your place, from what I understand, are like one or two minutes. So it should be should be all right. It, yeah, uh, the last couple of ones have been just a few seconds, mm-hmm. just long enough to be a pain in the ass. Yeah. The, and one time, like a power outage caused my computer to slowly die. Because uh, when I lived in a different city, we had like a power outage and then the power would come back really quick. And then it would go out while my computer was rebooting. And it did that like three or four times. And so at, at, right after that, my computer just it started experiencing a bunch of weird issues. And oh, yeah. a few a few months later, it just like the motherboard crapped out, and I had to get a new one. Well, that's uh that, that was another reason why I had been wanting to get a battery backup anyway, is because most of the time they have a power conditioner built into them. Yeah, and I know for certain that the power coming into the lines down here is probably really dirty. That so. that sounds about right. Uh, so you can find us all at uh, a road website. You can find me Nathan Reet Spruth, uh, mainly on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Reeton. 
I'm feeling a lot better now <laughs> than I was uh, last week, uh, which is good. I actually, did I? Yeah, so I missed a day of work last week because, oh, wow. yeah, I don't, uh, so last Saturday I went to dinner with uh, my family, which was a mistake. And always, always a mistake. And, um, well, the first thing that happened was my mom was in town and I get to my house cause I had driven her from my, from the airport to my sister's house on Thursday. And then on Saturday I go to the house and the first thing my mom says is, see, look, I told you his beard looks nasty. It's gross. <laughs> And so, like, for, and she mentioned, she mentioned it multiple times throughout the night that she thought my beard looked disgusting. What the fuck? And so I'm just like, now I can't shave until the next time I see you. <laughs> <laughs> so just, I just have to make it worse. Um, and then we get there. And so we went to a steakhouse. And my brother-in-law was offering to pay my mom for, you know, pay for my mom's food. And my mom's like, no. And she just went and played video slots and while we all ate dinner. So I don't know why. Uh, but my nephew showed up, and my nephew was super tired. And I figured he was tired because, like, he lays concrete for a living right now. And so I was like, oh, yeah, that sucks. So you're probably just drained from that. Uh, but no, I think that he was feeling like not well because he got he caught like a 24-hour bug because on monday night i was like man i'm gonna have to skip my stream i am super tired and have a headache and then i woke up the next day and it was the same way so i ended up uh skipping work on tuesday as well uh just to recover uh and then i was fine like wednesday i was i was totally okay it was just monday night and tuesday i was just out of it so my nephew got me sick uh, but I'm feeling better now. And uh, don't go to dinner with your family, basically. That's that's what I'm saying. Um, unless they're offering to pay for free steak, I guess. Which I did not get offered to pay for free steak. Which kind of sucks. Anywho's. Uh, let me ask what games you played this week, though. Uh, I did play quite a bit of uh, Death Must Die. Which, as I think I, I previously talked about, it's basically just a vampire survivor's like. Yeah, yeah, uh, you mentioned that before. Yeah, it's a it's a real good game. Um, but I have also spent a lot of time in City Skylines Two. Uh, but not actually playing the game. Yeah. Um, I've been working on building my hometown in the game oh uh so i'm i'm i've got google maps up on one monitor and i'm just kind of slowly building everything out uh trying to do like a it's not one to one it's more of like a two to one scale i see uh just because like the buildings in city skylines are so fucking big uh but I, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I feel like a, I feel like a, like a middle-aged man working with his model train set. Well, you're almost there. Yeah. Like we are, we are almost middle-aged, Oroa. I'm, I'm very, very close, uh, and I'm, I'm terrified of it. Uh, actually, yeah. depending on my life expectancy, <laughs> depending on how long <laughs> I live, I might be past middle age. But let's hope. Let's not dwell on that. I. Uh, <laughs> I I suck at that, but I know I've seen people who have like created worlds in video games using like is it Blender? Like, and they like take a basically a picture of like New York City, and that's how they create their like open world city. They like bring it in, and then use oh yeah yeah, and then three D model it, and then they put it into like a a game engine like Unreal or Unity. And so I was like, why don't you just do that? <laughs> Seems oh, a you're lot talking easier. like you're talking using photogrammetry. Yeah, uh, something. Well, yes and no, kinda. I don't know. I understand what you're doing. You're you're in yeah. City Skyline too, and you're just like, I just want to make a representation of my hometown. 
and yeah, that's that's I, cool. I I, just, I think it'd be really uh really neat. Uh, uh, once I once I do it in City Skylines too, because I don't think it's going to take me too awful long. Mm-hmm. I kind of I, I realized that uh, Project Zomboid has a map editor, and I'd kind of like to make it in Project Zomboid and then just see how it goes. I think that'd be really fun. That that sounds that I've thought about that idea before, like, um, the basically creating a creating like a world or a a video game where like oh it's this is my school and you're wa- you're walking through the school or whatnot. Uh, my boss actually for all the new clinics we're putting up apparently, uh, he got like a three. I don't know if he got if it's just using his phone or if he has like a three D camera, uh. But they're like, he's like, hey, guys, I uploaded the, the 3D rendering of our new clinic. Take a look at it. Here's the here's the password. And so he went in there and we're able to, like, walk around the new clinic in 3D. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've I've seen that with um, a lot of houses like on Zillow mm-hmm. will have that sort of thing. You can't walk around in it, but they they have just like a, a 3D map of the of the place. Well, this it's one probably is probably like, using the iPhone. Yeah, this one you it. I mean, you're you're not technically walking around in it, but you can like click and oh, okay. like it's like Google Maps where you click and it like goes to the next area. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. That is really like, cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. And the the bathroom doors are closed until you click on the bathroom and you go into the bathroom and it opens the door. <laughs> it it doesn't like physically like look like it's opening. Yeah. You just like teleport into the bathroom. But it's uh it's pretty neat, and I was like, that's cool. We should. I would hate to do that in my house because it's like, oh, look how messy Reeton's house is. <laughs> uh, I think with a brand new like clinic or an empty house, it's probably the best bet for those. Anywho, moving on to the games I played. Uh, I've been playing more like a dragon. Uh, Infinite Wealth. I have not completed that game yet. I'm almost done. It's. Uh, there's 14 chapters and I'm on chapter 13. I'm just doing like way too much stuff in the game because they're like, it, they, I, it's chapter 13 and they just gave me a new party member. So I'm like, God damn it, now I have to level him up and now I have to go and get all of his quests out of the way. And uh, I'm almost done. It's, uh, probably this week I'll, I'll beat it. Let's cross our fingers and hope. And then on Friday... Air Fox and I played some Fallout 76, and that was uh, better than I thought it would be. It was all right. I, uh, we got murdered a little bit, but other than that, it's good. Because we're sitting there, and I'm, I'm, we're far away from the enemies, and so I can't see what type of enemy it is, but I'm like, there's an enemy over there. And Air Fox is like, I'm going to shoot it. And it ended up being an Assaultron. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, why'd you piss off the Assaultron? And so we had to kill that, and it was all right. It was, it was, not, a, it was not a bad time playing with somebody else. And apparently, uh, we'll talk about it later, but it's be- apparently better than playing uh, Fallout 4 right now. Because Fallout 4 is... T- well, we'll oh, talk yeah. about that in a minute. We'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, and those are the only games I played were Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth and Fallout 76. We are going to move on, and we're going to talk about some news stories. We have good news stories for you today, like actually good news stories. Uh, the first one is that the FTC has voted to ban most non-compete clauses nationwide, which is awesome. Yeah, Absolutely awesome. Kind of, a, kind of a surprisingly cool move on their part. Well, yeah, I mean, you get decent people in those positions and and you find out that, hey, they make decent things. And hey, it's an election year, uh, so I'm not going to put it past them that this might just be like them being pressured to do it. Yeah, virtue signaling and saying like, hey, look what we did. Look what our administration does. And honestly, if that's the case, good. (laughs) I'm okay with that. Um, Yeah. It says here there's like a there's a graphic. It says uh, the FTC estimates that banning non competes will mean more innovation, uh, an average of seventeen thousand to twenty nine thousand more patients each year, uh, more startups, a two point seven percent increase in new firm formation, uh, formation uh, eighty five hundred new businesses per year, 
Um, and then higher earnings, typical workers earn 524 more dollars per year. So not a lot, <laughs> not a lot more per year, but non-competes uh, definitely can hinder you from from pursuing like different jobs. And I they're accounting for a lot more low end jobs here because I the one I can think of that I heard years ago was Jimmy John's has non-competes. And from what I understand, their non-compete was or is that you cannot work for another place that makes sandwiches uh, within two miles of a Jimmy, a Jimmy John's, not that Jimmy John's, but any Jimmy John's for two years. Wow, that's that's just straight up like. Like that doesn't even have like the validity of some non-competes the the. I've seen where it's like, you okay. know, you, you don't want somebody who's been working in a big tech company to go and work for another big tech company because yeah, you could share insider secrets. Okay, but, we're gonna we're gonna back up here though. I did hear that years yeah. ago. Apparently, in 2016, they got sued, <laughs> and <laughs> um, they dropped their non compete clauses in 2016. Um, so that's okay. good, but. That was the one that I remember. There's also non-compete clauses in, I know you're going to be surprised, professional wrestling. And yeah. I, don't, I don't know how this is going to affect those non-compete clauses. And the reason I say that is most non-compete clauses are like the Jimmy John's ones. So it's like you can't switch from one job to another job. But with the, the like WWE non-compete clauses... It's, we're going to fire you. So I'm, I, I go up to Aroa, and I'm like, hey, you're fired. Uh, and your non-compete is, we pay you for three months to sit at home. <laughs> um, but you just can't work anywhere else for those three months. So I don't know how that's going to work, because they still get paid their contract for those three months before they can work anywhere else. Uh. Mm. I and, think it. I, I don't think it should matter, really. Yeah. Like it, the the only the only thing would be if it's if it's in their contract, I guess that they can't work anywhere else while the contract is active. But well, just, yeah, that, and that's you could presumably cancel the contract out. But well, also, if you're getting if they're getting paid, then yeah, that that well, anyway. the non compete being in the contract wouldn't matter because all not most non competes are being canceled. So that is being rule, ruled as. Uh, null and void so most likely well, what would happen is they'll just be like we're gonna set you at home for three months and then just fire you well it's a it, it there's i'm not sure what a, what constitutes it being a non-compete i'm i'm just thinking that like because a lot of places have like a no moonlighting policy that sort yeah. of thing would that we, we technically would that be, uh well, and, and here's the thing, though, with with uh, with WWE and all professional wrestling, in my opinion, they are labeled as independent contractors, but they right. can't work anywhere else. Yeah, uh, which is uh, they that's illegal. <laughs> oh, yeah. So the thing is, as an independent contractor, uh, you should be able to work wherever you want. So if I'm an independent contractor and I'm working at like Facebook doing construction or something like that. Uh, as long as it doesn't interfere with the work that I'm doing at Facebook, then I can I should be able to go wherever like I could go do things on the side. Uh, there are there's a list of things that being an independent contractor, um, there's like ten different things and I can't remember them off the top of my head. But professional wrestling violates like at least half of them. So, but yeah, that's not terribly surprising. But because yeah. like part of the problem. I imagine in, in professional wrestling is that it's, it's essentially a, a monopoly. Like, yeah. and, and so if you, you don't want to burn your bridges with WWE because like, where, where else are you going to go? Are exactly. You're going to go to, I what, mean, what, I don't even, I can't even remember uh, TNA. You're going to go to TNA. Well, like, oh, well, I was going to say, thankfully they do have a lot more options. Now they have TNA, they have, which is still around. Shockingly enough, TNA wrestling is still around. It's in Vegas now. Um, and so all of their like filming 
is done in, in Las Vegas. So if I ever go down to Vegas, I can just go to TNA, which will be fun. Um, and then there's AEW. AEW is a big one. They're paying out some massive contracts. Uh, you have still like New Japan Pro Wrestling, and then you have like smaller uh, wrestling companies like yeah. uh, Major League Wrestling and stuff. Um, yeah, but the 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 key the key difference there being like, I, I guess with with uh, the second one that you mentioned being an exception, like you're not going to get paid anywhere near as much. Yeah. The, uh, well, as yeah, if you and went to WWE and the other companies. So like. Yeah, AEW not so much, but TNA and New Japan to a lesser extent, like they allow you to work independence. So you can actually work elsewhere, whereas with WWE, you can't do that, uh, except for on rare exceptions. But uh, that's kind of, we've, we've shifted away. Shockingly enough, we have shifted away from the <laughs> original conversation. Uh, but it's good because... Uh, Another one that we heard about, and they mentioned it here at the end of this article from TechSpot, is there was a like a healthcare place that had a non compete, and another hospital was offering like nurses way more money to move over, but they couldn't do uh -huh. it, and they kept getting sued, and um, they had even people who didn't have non competes were still getting sued, and like block like a judge ended up blocking them from taking the job elsewhere. It was BS. I think technically. Uh, I spoke to my, or in the handbook, uh, it says that we have a no moonlight lighting policy unless your manager approves it. And my manager yeah. has, has basically said, I don't care. As long as, as long as you do your job here, I don't care if you like make money on the side. That's stupid. And my manager is pretty cool. I, I'm, I couldn't be ha happier with the manager that I have. Uh, but another thing, uh, so we have, we have another thing to talk about that's good, but I, I just remembered even another thing that has happened this week um, or in the last couple of weeks that is a good thing for the American worker. Um, the American worker, uh, do you, you know what they do at like dollar stores, right? Like Dollar Tree, where they will hire a person on as a manager and then give them a salary, but the salary oh, yeah. will be... Uh, back in the day, like 10 years ago, it was like twenty five, twenty six thousand dollars $26,000. And the, if, the way that it works is if you make on salary under a certain amount, so you make like $20,000, then they have to pay you overtime until they, you get up to that twenty five dollars or $26,000 mark. And then they don't have to pay you overtime anymore. And a lot of times what the dollar stores would do is say they would just pay you right over that cap. So that way they could work you 60 hours a week, but you're still only making twenty five, twenty six thousand dollars $26,000. Yeah. Um, Lots of places do that. Yeah. And they raised it up in 2014, 2015 to like $43,000. It was a federal minimum wage, wasn't it? That was that's not the federal minimum wage. They pay they raised the salary cap. So they, they raised the so they raised the salary cap to forty something thousand dollars. So that way, like say you were making that twenty five thousand dollars at the dollar store, you would then be able to get overtime until you hit that like forty something thousand dollar cap. Oh, okay. because uh, I I I thought it was the Federal minimum wage is seven twenty five. Well, yeah, but I, I was thinking that that was, or well, it wasn't federal minimum wage, but it was if your state has a minimum wage that's higher than federal minimum wage, then they have to meet that. But essentially, if you're a salaried employee, you have to at least make the equivalent of minimum wage. Yeah. Uh, or else your your company has to make up for that. Right. And And they, so what they have done is in 2017, whatever administration was in charge then, 2017 or 2018, uh, they lowered it from like 43 or 45,000 to 35,000. So they, they essentially took money away from you, workers. You'd never guess which administration that was. Yeah, yeah, you'll never guess. But this current administration uh, has raised that uh, back to 46,000 for 2025 
And then in 2026, it raises up to 53000 And yeah, so people are going to be making a lot more money now if you're salaried workers, which is great. So that was just another random thing that happened in the last week that was good. <laughs> and the other random thing that happened in this week that was good from this administration is net neutrality is back, baby, in 60 days. Hey, that's pretty cool, even though... I believe ISPs are planning on suing. Over oh, it. oh yeah, they they're yeah. Of course, they're planning on suing. They lost last time that they sued, but they 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 love suing. Um, but basically, net neutrality. If you don't remember what net neutrality was, it was basically brought on to make internet, uh, make the internet governed as a public utility, like a phone or uh, like a a TV or something like that, because. Public utilities uh, can have special regulations and say, hey, you can't prioritize one company or, or, or another company. Uh, so if I, if I am on T-Mobile and a row is on Verizon um, and I give a row a call, like a phone call, which will never happen. Uh, if I give a row a phone call, it will – like Verizon can't make the call – quality crappier when calling somebody on t-mobile it has to be the same call quality um net neutrality was brought on because in when was it like 2012 2011 whatever i forget what year it was um verizon i believe had their or was it comcast one of the big players had their own streaming service that they were trying to pump out that was, that was comcast yeah. it was comcast um, they had their own streaming service they were trying to pump out, and what they did was they literally made it so that Netflix had crappier connection yep. so, to, to drive you to use their, uh, their streaming service. And the, the FTC was like, you can't, or FCC, sorry. Um, the FCC was like, you can't do that. That is bad. Like, you're, you're intentionally throttling on this one particular website because you, it, it will benefit you, and that, that is unfair. And so they created net neutrality basically because of that and other things that would uh, cause issues with you know, internet companies and, and consumer distaste. And then that came in in 2015, and then in 2017, <laughs> two years later, uh, it was repealed by the FCC uh from there and then now net neutrality is back but it's got 60 days it, it goes into effect 60 days from now or after it uh it says meanwhile net neutrality regulations are set to go into effect 60 days after the publication in the federal register um so i don't know what exactly that means but basically 60 days from now and hopefully uh everything should be all right and of course they're going to get sued and We'll see what happens well, yeah, there. Don't you know that they're they're stifling innovation? Uh, Think of all the ways that the, that the ISPs could save money by keeping you from being able to use their service to the full potential. Yeah, yeah, uh, ex exactly. Good, I guess. Just like how making those those uh, those internet service uh, nutrition facts things was a was a big big use of their resources and took a lot of time and effort and money uh-huh you know yeah i had a and i it was a couple of months ago um i every couple of months i'll be like hey give me faster internet because i know they have my internet service provider has 1000 by 1000 and i'm only getting 1000 by 20 uh because of whatever node i'm on they refuse to upgrade it and uh so they have that, and I was like, give me better internet. And the, the lady on the other line was like, hey, I can't, like, you, you have the best internet that you can get in your area right now, but what I can do is I can save you $20 a month, um, but you have to enable VoIP on your modem. And I was like, okay, whatever. And she was like, we have to send somebody out to, to do that. And so he comes over, and he's like, oh, you already have the, the modem for it, so I just got to press this button, and then we wait for it to reboot for like 20 minutes. 
And I'm like, oh, okay. I could have done that. And he's like, eh, I think it's some regulation or some shit. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then, so we're just bullshitting. And he's like, yeah, we got this memo. And he's just talking crap about his job. It was great. Um, he's like, yeah, so we got this memo that was like, hey, guys, we're paying off, you know, we're paying off all the pe- all of our debtors. Like, we're, we're making good. Things are coming up. Uh, you know, TDS, which is the internet company I go through. And uh, he's like, yeah, the only reason they're paying off their debtors is because their debtors sued them. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, that's great. Uh, so my internet company sucks. Uh, so anything that can screw them over is better for me. And uh, I uh, found out, huh? I was going to say, uh, well, my, my internet company is pulling some bullshit too, but if you had more, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say the, the re- he, he was telling me the reason why um, they're, they're not upgrading my internet is they're putting the fiber, and, and that, that's the reason they're not upgrading my internet, is they're putting fiber in the new locations that they go to. But the current locations, they don't have the money because they're pay- all their money is going to their debtors. <laughs> Uh, so like it would cost them too much money to go to different areas and upgrade it. But he said that uh, the node that I'm on is slowly dying, <laughs> and oh. so he thinks that uh, mine's going to be upgraded sooner than other ones, just because uh, the node is is being overtaxed right now. Now are you are you currently on cable or on fiber? Cable. Okay. That yeah, that makes sense then. Yeah. Uh, anyway, what were you saying that your internet company is doing? Uh, I got an email from AT&T recently that said, hey, just so you know, uh, we're going to make your bill higher. But if you have auto pay on, we're going to reduce your bill by the same amount that we're raising your bill. Okay. So essentially, it, I, I already have auto pay on because yeah. I just have it go onto my credit card anyway. Yeah. But they're essentially strong arming you into turning on auto pay because huh. if you don't, you're going to pay ten dollars more a month. Those assholes. <laughs> of and course I, they do. Like that. normally, I I hate auto pay. The only reason that I'm okay with it with with my internet service is that like realistically, I'm not going to change it, and yeah. so I'm I'm not really worried about it. And also, I have it on my Apple Card, so like if they tried to pull any bullshit, I'll just change my card number. So like yeah, whatever. I have I have a uh, I have auto pay on a lot of things, basically, <laughs> just because I I don't care. I'm I, I would rather it come out and like everything be paid um, right away just because I'm I'm terrified of going into debt, terrified of not paying for something and being into in a position where they're like, hey, your credit just dropped 100 points, uh, which which happened to me once uh not because of me but because of a friend and uh now i'm very mad at him still (laughs) because my my credit literally dropped 100 points in a day oh my god uh i'll tell you that story after uh but yeah no that's that's fine uh we will uh i I, I should i should interrupt you again no sorry it's fine uh are you seeing your voice activity like working consistently uh mine yeah okay because there, there have been several times where you've just gone mute like mid-sentence and then you've come back oh uh, and I, I i'm looking I, at I the discord know. debug stuff and it's it's acting like there's just no audio coming through so i i didn't know if it was your mic or if it's just network uh it's got to be network because i'm looking at my you can tell me the next time it happens but i'm watching my audacity and everything's coming up reading Everything's okay. coming up reading. Yeah. <laughs> Just checking. Okay. Everything seems to be working. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens if, uh, if when I go into edit and I'm like, oh, my voice isn't there for three seconds. What the fuck's heck going on there? No, everything seems to be working on my end. So it must be a network connection okay. thing. Yeah. I, uh, I know that the network cable going to my PC, I need to redo it because it's like, I made it whenever my computer was on my desk and now it's about a foot further than that. And I didn't really think about that possibility. So it's, it's very stressed. Oh man. And, uh, oh, there, uh, I, 
I went to a clinic and I had to like, you know, put the put the new PC in the clinic machine and like I was just like, "Oh man, next time we come here, I'm going to have to redo this ethernet cable because it's like exposed wires for like the last like 3 <laughs> inches." And it wasn't it was that way when I got there. I was just like, "I just I don't want to run an ethernet cable. Th- I didn't have an ethernet cable to run." Uh, but also running ethernet cables through those chairs is a pain in the butt in the the dental chairs oh like you have to like there's a big thing underneath and you have to like literally run it through the chair and then up the pole at the end and you have to i didn't have the equipment to do it at the time so i was just like i'm not doing it um we're gonna move on to our next story and this one is a change to the steam early access refund policy which I guess the early access refund policy used to be different. Um, This is from Massively OP. If you ever need another reason not to purchase or play games in early access, Valve has stepped forward to give you a huge one with our latest update to Steam's refund agreement. It's now going to count time played in early access against the refund timer, meaning that sinking more than two hours into early access will render the game unrefundable. Now, I thought this is how it all already was, but apparently they've just changed it. So it used to be where if you were in early access, you could play as much as you want and still get a refund off of it. And honestly, I think that's a uh, that was a little too generous uh, on on Valve's part. I would I would say I, I would agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think this policy makes complete sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, like I hate to like side with the corporations, uh, which <laughs> again we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but this is this is fair. Like if you're pay- if you're, I think it should be a little more, maybe more than two hours in early access. Maybe make it like five hours in early access. Um, but then once the game's fully released, only two hours. But um, it it is a little weird. It says here, Steam's long-running refund policy allowed gamers to seek a refund on any game within two weeks and under two hours. That is still not changing. It's also allowed gamers to seek a refund on any game before its launch, which meant that if you bought a game in early access, played it several dozens of hours to test it, didn't like it, uh, and then requested a refund, then you'd get the refund with no questions asked. Um, Now it's treating them... It says Steam will be treating early access titles the same way it treats launch games by making it subject to the same two-hour window. Um, But it's also the the two-week thing isn't going into effect, though. That's what I'm... That's what I was trying to get to, was it's the two-week timer starts when the game launches. So... You can buy an early access, and as long as you play oh. for under two hours, you can refund any time within that early access period. I see this. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think it's fair. I think that is a completely fair thing to do. I still think I do think it maybe early access should be a couple more hours, because a lot of the times you're at least for me, I don't expect to fully get into a game when it's in early access um i'm gonna I, it I'm depends gonna, though right yeah like, like i'm gonna load up look a at game. look at well look at seven days to die it's it's just now coming out of early access yeah and that's been seven years uh at least yeah <laughs> like something like that I, I i do think that this is probably a way to make up for like to treat the symptom that is questionable use of the early access model yeah but i I, if anything it's it's valve just kind of accepting that there's nothing they can do about the way that early access is used the way that it is Mm -hmm. i i yeah a lot of a lot of times developers will just leave games in early access forever too mm -hmm. which is well that's what i mean is i i think it's valve going it is kind of bullshit for developers who are it may be, they're using early access as a way of describing their game as it's not 
it's not really finished yet. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think that's a totally viable way of saying that like, while the game is playable, while the game may be even mostly feature complete, it's just not in a state where I can, I can confidently say that I am pleased with, with the current product. So I'm putting in an early access to basically put a flag on the game saying, if you're not ready for an experience that, that may have issues, then don't buy the game. Yeah. And, and, I, it, I, but I, I do think it's bullshit that you could buy the game in that state, play it for as long as you want and then refund it. Mm -hmm. Well, like, well, Rust was in early access for a long time too. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that game was, I played it quite a bit when it was in early access. I probably won't be buying a lot of early access games in the future. And except for, uh, whatever Larian Studios next outing is, whatever, the, if they put that in early access, which I think they have said that they will, uh, I'll probably pick that up to, right as it goes into early access just because well, let's, they have a good track record. Let, let's, uh, look at, let me see. Uh, so lethal company, lethal company is an early access game. Oh, is it? Uh, Yes. Um, Pal World is an early access game. Yeah. Uh, uh, the coin game I is no an early access that game. That is, that is, uh, a game where you're essentially playing like Chuck E. Cheese games. Oh, okay. okay. Like it's just, it's, it's a, it's Chuck E. Cheese simulator. Um, like the, I have a ton of games in my library, uh, that are all, Technically, early access. In so fact, you're saying I could VR go. VR chat is. Wow, yeah. VR chat is an early access game. I did not know that. That's funny. So you're saying I could go refund Pal World, even though I played it for like 40 hours now. Not anymore. Dang. But <laughs> you, you could before this policy went into place. Damn. And, that, and that's what I mean, though, right? Is that like, it's kind of bullshit that you can, you can have a game out play it for for however long it gets millions of sales but then like just kind of arbitrarily decide yeah all right i think i'm good and then you just refund it because well it has an early access tag yeah like, that... i think that's bullshit yeah i agree a again i think that maybe the policy I, I, should be a couple more hours but i do yeah, I, do, I, I, I do agree with that or or maybe there should be like special cases for like Hey, this game hasn't been updated in a year. Yeah, you know? there's there's some. I was it Starforge or something like that. There was a a game. I, I that's probably not the name, uh, but it was in early access and it was you know kind of the Rust type of game, uh, but instead of being more like modernish, it was like a futuristic type. So like you were like. I, terraforming a planet. That might be Starforge. I okay. think you might be right. And then they just abandon it. Like the developers just took the money and ran. Yeah. And that that's something that yeah, you should definitely be able to get refunded when when they haven't updated the game in years now. Um but we're going to move on to our next story which uh, caused kind of a a stir um because uh, have you played this uh, Escape from Tarkov game? I hear it's, oh. it's super popular. Yeah, yeah, I I heard of that. I heard um, of that game. Apparently, a lot of people really like it. Um, I have a friend who built a computer basically just so he could play Escape from Tarkov. And that's psychotic. Well, I mean, he wanted to play other games too, but the game he plays the most is is Escape from Tarkov. Uh, so I maintain I, I, my statement. Okay. Um, <laughs> And it is, it is, uh, it's a very diff. I played it and I sucked at it. I was absolutely terrible. Uh, did you know that at nighttime you can't see anything? Yes. D figure well, that you, out. You have to buy night vision goggles. Yeah, I didn't know that. Uh, and I didn't realize it was nighttime. <laughs> so I dropped <laughs> in and was like, huh. And then I just got immediately sniped by somebody. I was like, good, good. This is a good game. Um, Great. I lost all of my items. This is such a fun game. But the good thing is, the good thing about the game is they're making it playable. They're making it so that if you don't, if you have more money than cents, uh, you can actually <laughs> play the game uh, by paying two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just, just fucking 
fucking wow, man. Yeah, this like, is this is from massively OP again. Uh, Battlestate Games has decided to access. Um, I'm sorry, has decided that access to a PVE mode for its otherwise PVP centric shooter uh, is worth a whole lot of money, specifically two hundred and fifty dollars. As playing the mode will release only with the unheard edition of the game. Uh, the pricey bundle packs a a bunch of other gubbins. Why? Uh, like right. more storage, a unique melee weapon, more slots in the flea market, and free access to future DLCs. But it's access to that co-op PVE mode with no wipes that has caused an uproar among players. So the PVE mode is what would make the game more playable. Uh, because then you could, you know, actually like figure out for me, it's just like going around and figuring out the maps without being shot at the whole time. So I'm like, okay, I know where things are. Um, right. Uh, but yeah, it's like, it says it's not new player, just new players who are being fleeced either. Those who previously bought the edge of darkness edition, which also promised access to all future DLCs, We'll have to purchase a $100 upgrade to get access to the PvE mode as the Edge of Darkness edition is no longer on sale. What's making that matter worse is Battlestate's response to that point as it claims PvE is a unique feature and therefore does not constitute as DLC. Like, that's some fucking EA class bullshit. The studio also attempted to appease Edge of Darkness owners by granting them only... Six months of offline PVE mode access. So they're like, oh man, you guys are really mad. Uh, you can have it for six months? Ah? Ah? No, why Which are you is leaving? fucking nuts. Because like, so, so like Tarkov, Tarkov is not sold on Steam. You have to buy it through their website. Yep. Which presumably means that they're getting a much bigger cut than most games anyway. Yeah, they're getting a one hundred percent cut instead of a seventy percent cut. So, I mean, there's well, got to be probably I, there's a third I'm party sure that, something, but yeah, they they have to have some kind of transactors. But they're probably getting like ninety percent, right? At least, yeah. Uh, and and like the game is already relatively expensive, let alone if you get a more premium version. Um, but like the the their reasoning. Because uh, I don't think this says why they are locking it behind, other than to say that it, it doesn't constitute DLC. Uh, their stated reasoning is that they don't have the server capacity for all owners of the game, even the Edge of Darkness owners, to play the PVE mode. And I, I just cannot fathom how that's possible. Yeah, it's it's not good. It, it's not a good look for the company. And that's a lot of money for that edition, too. Yeah. 250 bucks for a game is a lot of money. I, if, I, if I could go back in time and spend $250 on a game, that would be... Um, oh, I can't even remember the name of it right now. The, the one you have the controller of. Oh, Steel Battalion. Yeah, Steel Battalion. I'd go back and buy that. Just add the giant controller. Well, like, like, and it, it, I think it's also bullshit considering the way that the game is designed that they include extra shit, like, like more storage and, and more slots on the flea market. Yep. That's fucking, that's fucking bullshit to me too. Like, what is the flea market? Is that like, is that like an auction house type thing? Basically, yeah, okay. it's it's a it's your primary way of making money because it, like Tarkov is an extraction shooter, it, arguably like one of the OG extraction shooters. Um, so you go into the map, you're supposed to collect shit and then extract and then you sell whatever stuff that you find that you don't need on the flea market. Obviously, if you have more slots on the flea market, you can sell more things and make more money quicker. Yeah. So you are inherently purchasing an advantage by buying a premium edition of the game. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, with the PvE mode, are you able to bring things back from that and then sell those on the flea market as well? 
I I don't know. I, I don't, don't know, know that too many too many details about how the PVE mode is going to work have have come out, other than the fact that dying doesn't matter. Uh, which, like it, that was the other thing is that a PVE mode would be exactly the thing to get me back into Tarkov. Yeah, because like PvP is so unbelievably frustrating, especially for a new player, and like there is no balance to it. Like, there's not even an attempt to balance because you can just you can end up in matchmaking with somebody that has like a fully automatic weapon and, and with like a scope on it and shit and like full body armor. And you, there's nothing you can do, like unless you get really lucky, you're fucked. Mm -hmm. And it, it, in my opinion, the worst thing about Tarkov in in the way that that works is that when you die you lose everything that you had with you, including the stuff that you brought from your base. So like you're just fighting a losing battle at that point. If you get unlucky with who you get mash made with, uh, yeah. like they have the, they have the scav system to try to make up for that, which basically gives you a disposable character, but they, you can't customize their equipment before you send them out. So yeah, and they they, you they just start out with like shitty equipment. Yeah, and, and they're supposed to go out and like get your stuff back, right? Well, that's that's a different thing. That's okay. for if you that's for if you pay for insurance before you go out. Okay. Um then the then uh your broker will send somebody out to get your shit. Uh but that is only if another player doesn't loot it before before which, it uh, yeah, despawns but, which by the way if you're getting not if you're getting killed by somebody they're going to loot your stuff like presumably they're, they're going like to take anything time, yeah like, anything that's it, worthwhile right so like it it's just i i like tarkov from a conceptual standpoint but that the pve setup of it just really turns me off and then the the gall of them to lock everything behind a PVE mode is just like they locked everything in the PVE mode behind such a massive paywall is just like go fuck yourselves. Yeah, like if it was like fifty I'll, bucks, I go play like, Dark and Darker again. If it was like <laughs> like, like it's a it's a lot of money still, but if it and I probably wouldn't pay it, but if it was like fifty bucks for just the PVE mode, I think yeah. that most people wouldn't have cared. But also the fact that they're claiming it's not like you bought this edition of the game, the uh, the unheard edition or whatever. I don't know. I don't remember what it's called. Um, the, the Edge it, of Darkness. You got the Edge of Darkness edition. The yeah. Edge of Darkness edition that said, hey, it's going to include all the DLC, but then also saying, oh, the PVE mode isn't DLC, so uh, pay for it. You got to pay 100 bucks now, which is a discount, but it's still $100 for a a new mode to a game that should not should not have you pay that much for a PVE mode because that should already be in the game. Well, I'm pretty sure that the Edge of Darkness edition was like $150. Probably. So um, really it's not even a discount. You're just Cub Edge of Darkness price. Uh a statement made yesterday, but then when you did, 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 did. No, that didn't give me the that's not giving me the $140. Okay, so you're right. It was $140. Um so you're getting you're getting a $10 discount? <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. So happy that this company is is just milking their players for money and I I wonder how this is going to have uh like what effect this is going to have on their player base. If any. I mean, there's always going to be the hardcore people who are just going to keep playing the game because they really like Tarkov. But, and, and to be fair, looking at it this way, like if you're not a hardcore player at this point of Tarkov in Tarkov, then you're probably not playing Tarkov because that game is very brutal. Uh, and the PVE mode, I, as you were saying, I think it would bring a lot of people in to 
experience Tarkov without having that just anxiety of just like spawning and immediately dying over and over and over again. But we're going to move so, on to our. Oh, so they have not going to uh, move on. I, Sorry, they, they, I'm on their Reddit right now. Okay. Uh, they have they have again updated the situation. They have changed their mind again. Okay. Uh, the PVE mode will be free to all owners of the uh, Edge of Darkness edition at the release of the game when the server infrastructure will be improved to the required capacity. So right now they're they're launching the PVE mode uh, as it has an early access essentially okay. for those who buy the $250 version. Um, but uh, once, once it's fully released, then all those people will get, get it added. Additionally, uh, they do want to add the ability to separate or to separately purchase access to pve uh but they're they're working on what the pricing will be for that all the money that's <laughs> that's what they want it to be they want it to cost all of the money um well at least they updated it so that it'll be included with the and i assume all the other stuff like the flea market space and storage and all that's not going to be included for the edge of darkness edition but the uh, PVE being included for more than six months is probably the best thing they could do right now. I do wonder how much they're going to charge for the PVE once it actually releases. But, but it's also yeah. just really this sets a bad precedent. Yeah, it does. And it, like it, you losing losing that losing the the public relations angle is a really bad thing. Why do companies not like take this to their employees and ask them, "Hey, what do you think about this?" before they yeah, make these stupid like, decisions? Or even like, because a game like Tarkov is going to have like big influencers, right? Yeah, and yeah. It, it's it seems like every time a game makes a controversial decision, but like makes the right one. It's after they consult with people who are really big in the community and who like have like they have the insight to be able to say, no, this is a bad move. Yeah, like uh, I, I've told this story before. Uh, I had a friend when I worked at Sony that he had worked at a previous company and at the previous company, he was the systems director, which meant like they had he was the one who like set up the skill progression so that you leveled up like, okay, by this time in the game, you should have these skills or, you know, this tier of skill. And then by the end of the game, you'll have like this tier of skill or whatnot. And so they had like completed the game and made the skill progression work. And they're like, perfect. It's great. Feels good. You always feel like there's a challenge, but you're getting more powerful. Perfect. And then the publisher came in and was like, Hey, microtransactions. And he's like, but we can't do that. Like, it's perfectly balanced right now. And if we change that and we put in microtransactions, then it's not going to be perfectly balanced. And then the player's going to hate it. And the publisher's like, yeah, so microtransactions, we don't care. Uh, and when that game came out, uh, everyone hated it because the skill progression was screwed up by microtransactions. And that game was Shadow of War. Yeah, I was, I was, I was, are you talking to Shadow of War? Yep, yep. <laughs> so, uh, thankfully, uh, I think they fixed that in later patches. But, yeah, he was just like, it was it was a shit show. <laughs> and that's kind of like what happened here is I'm sure the publisher or the whoever's in charge was like, we should just release this. Who? They don't care. The people who play this game, they don't care about PvE mode. We'll just put, include that in the $250 bundle. And... Any if they had talked to any of the low like de lowly developers or graphic artists or something, and the graphic artists would probably be like, "Oh, it's a bad idea." <laughs> it's a yeah. it's a really bad idea. <laughs> but they never talk to they never talk to those guys. They just say, "Hey, this is what we're doing," and they don't allow much you know conversation other than that. 
uh, which is uh, shitty. But now we are going to move on to our last story. And uh, Bethesda, they try. About another another company making a stupid decision. <laughs> well, this one wasn't a stupid decision. It was just poor execution of that decision. Um, <laughs> I, I, would, I would say that, that the update, the idea for what they're doing is not a bad idea. But mm, they yeah. did it in the worst way possible. Um, Fallout 4 is uh, completely unplayable right now on Steam. Uh, because well, if you're if you're using mods, if you're well, it's it's also kind of not super playable anyway. Because and we'll we'll talk about that too. So Bethesda did an update. They did an update for the Xbox Series of consoles and the PlayStation Five that basically increased the graphics a little bit. You can choose between performance and quality mode um, to get higher frame rate and and better quality visuals and stuff on the pc side uh you download the game and it or you update the game and it breaks the game and it breaks the mods for the game one of those mods uh which i think it's the fallout script extender has a bunch of different stuff in it um one of those mods makes it so that the physics when you're running at a higher frame rate the physics don't break because if you run at a higher frame rate in that game, uh, it will like make everything run a little too fast. Yep, or... that's the creation engine for you. Yeah, and one of, one of the mods fixes that. And so, if you even if you are like, so now you have to go in and set a um, cap, uh, like a, a frame rate cap in the game, uh, either using a third party utility or the game itself, and. Um, then you're able to have the physics run normal until the mods are, are fixed. Uh, also, another thing they did was they finally made it Steam, uh, Steam Deck verified so that uh, oh. it was already running fine on the Steam Deck. It just wasn't technically verified because... Well, you know, it, it was only a 10-year-old game anyway. Yeah, in order to get in... Well, the, the reason it wasn't Steam Deck verified was because when you launched the game, on PC, it opens up a launcher that can only be used using mouse or keyboard. Oh. Uh. And so the way they made it Steam Deck verified, which is on the Steam Deck, if you download it, from what I understand, I could be wrong, but I think this is how it works. When you download it on the Steam Deck, you launch it, and it just goes straight into the game. Sounds good, right? Makes it verified, makes it go straight into the game. Also, doesn't let you mess with any of the settings in the game <laughs> because you have to do that through the launcher. <laughs> so, I wonder if they just they just made it so that it adds like a no launcher flag to yeah, the shortcut. I'm pretty <laughs> sure that and and there's a yeah there's a way to enable it. So the way to play the games before is you would just get the launcher open and then on the Steam Deck screen you press the play button. And now it just goes straight into the game, but you can't change any of the settings in the game unless you enable that launcher again. <laughs> so they did it in the worst way possible, basically. Um, and if you're playing Fallout 4 on PC without mods, like, that sounds wrong. <laughs> yeah, like, like, how are you even... Are you okay? Yeah, like, like... I, I, think the, I think when I played it, I played it when it first came out, so I might have been using like one or two mods, but yeah. at this point, like you, you have to have mods just to make it somewhat playable, especially if you're using new hardware and it's running at 150 frames a second. Uh, <laughs> you're going to run into a lot of issues and you have to have that mod that makes it so the physics are fixed. Um, and it's also, it didn't fix a lot of the bugs. So that, that was another reason it got patched was because there were a bunch of bugs that they were like, okay, we need to fix those. Um, and it says here from Destructoid, what's also disappointing is how few bugs the update has addressed. Uh, Bethesda has patched Fallout 4 several times since launch, yet some issues have continued to plague the game for years. The newest patch has fixed some of them, such as one that prevented save data from loading during the prologue. Uh, the full list is shown on Steam. However, only 16 bugs fixes alongside unspecified stability improvements which isn't that many in the grand scheme of things 
Uh, it also, uh, that this doesn't mean the game's update has been going smoothly on consoles either. Um, the Xbox Series X version quality mode, um, which sacrifices frame rate for higher graphics, doesn't work. Performance mode, which prioritizes a smoother frame rate, works completely fine, but disabling it doesn't change anything, keeping the game at 60 FPS and the same quality. Meanwhile, PlayStation Plus subscribers who got Fallout 4 through the Extra Tiers game catalog have learned the hard way that they haven't received the update at all. <laughs> so if you got it for free from, uh, from PlayStation Plus, uh, you just don't get the update. Uh, Bethesda has said that the team is working on resolving this so the PlayStation Plus Extra users will get the update at some point. Uh, so uh, that's that's pretty funny. It's pretty great. Um, so yeah, the, the, it sounds like a Bethesda update, basically, is what I'm saying. Uh, it yeah. Broke all the mods, didn't fix many of the bugs, doesn't quite work on the Xbox. Now... I do like that they have a 60 x uh 60 fps mode on the uh on the Xbox series of consoles which you would think that the Xbox Series X would be able to run Fallout 4 at ultra quality with 60 fps. Yeah, I I assume that it was just a matter of they needed to patch it into the game to let it do that. But the quality Cause... mode the quality mode makes it go to 30 fps though. Oh. Yeah. That's from what oh. I understand. So the quality mode well, is it, 30 FPS. Oh, it, well, it says it, it says it doesn't, it just doesn't work. Yeah, it doesn't work though. Yeah. So the, the performance mode, which is 60 FPS, uh, works fine. But the quality mode, which like basically runs it on like ultra graphic settings, right? Uh, yeah. Which, but it, it lowers it, it caps it at 30 FPS. And it doesn't work. Uh, All so, right. So, yeah, it's uh, it's good. It's good. At least we had a couple good stories at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, Fallout 4, uh, well, if you want to play it on Steam Deck, it's Steam Deck Verified now. You just can't change any of the settings when you go in. Well, and and it is, it, it should be said, at least for the Steam version, uh, you can just roll back to a previous version. That's true. Uh, you can't do that on the Xbox, I don't think, but you can do it on. Yep. Nope. Can't do it on Steam. You can you can play with an older version and and have the mods work, but uh, I don't know. Just I would just wait like a month, and all the mods will be working again. I would imagine. Yeah. That's... Well, I, I would uh, I would assume that a vast majority of the mods that are broken are related to the script extender being broken. So yeah. once uh once script extender is fixed, then a lot of other mods will be fixed. But I uh, it it sounds like this update is essentially just a way to get people to see Fallout 4 in their library again. Possibly. Like I for mean, it to just for it to be in the in the what's new section of Steam, that but, sort of thing. But that that being said, like Fallout the Fallout series itself has had a massive just increase oh, in players and, and, and new buyers in the last, yeah. in the last I, month. I'm, I am guessing that this is just like something that two or three people at Bethesda were working on in their spare time. And then somebody was like, Hey, since, uh, you know, we got the show and like people are playing the game again, maybe we should go ahead and roll out those, those fixes you guys have been working on for fun. Yeah, that would be nice. Know. I don't know. The yeah, the the show came out and it just it just massive uptick in popularity is what happened. And it yeah. it's a good show. I watched it, finished it last week. It was uh it was good. I enjoyed it. I I don't care about it even a little bit. I don't really I don't know. You don't I watch don't, TV. I don't really well, there's that, but also just like I don't really understand people who have these weird obsessions with Bethesda's properties. Um, I, particularly Fallout. See, I've liked Fallout since like 1999. Well, but that's different, right? Like, yeah. I feel like I feel like uh, the the original Fallout One and Two ha have just like a completely different mood. 
they do to Fallout three and four, and like New Vegas is one, the only one that gets close to that, and it really does seem like Bethesda just kind of wants to pretend New Vegas never happened. I, I yeah, and then like they they've they have shifted so far away from one what one and two were. Uh, I right. still enjoy the games. Like I enjoyed three and four, um, but there it's just it's so. And may, may, it, it's it's probably just a me thing because yeah, I don't really be. understand how people can be like this anyway. But like I I get so many YouTube shorts and and like r- algorithm recommendations of like people still making content related to Fallout and Skyrim. Yeah. After this long. And like even like Morrowind and shit, and I just don't don't tell understand. Connor that Dan. <laughs> don't well, tell Connor. Like, th- it's one it's one thing to appreciate that shit, or or even like the the one chick who like goes through and like looks at fashion uh, in the different areas and like like analyzes the the subtle world building that goes into the character designs of those old games. And like, I think that's cool. But the people who are just like, like obsessed with with the same plot lines that have always been in these games for. I I don't know, I don't get it. The people who act like Fallout 4 is still like a new experience for anyone. I I don't know. Uh, I weird to me. I have fun with it. I haven't played. I played it when it came out. I haven't played it since. Um, maybe it's just that I don't I don't know how people would like have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you don't know? like you don't you don't get that. Like I don't get it. Like my girlfriend, uh, her favorite part about Fallout Four was the building mode, like actually going in. Huh? Like, yeah, she liked the base building stuff. So like I was talking to her, uh, and this was before I bought her her Steam Deck, and um, she was like, "Oh yeah, I, I like the Fallout that you can like do building and stuff." And I was like, "What?" she's like yeah i really like the building and i was like "Uh uh-huh the what that was the worst part of that game she should like play like any survival crafting game because they're all better than fallout with that well she also likes fallout like she liked fallout 3 she liked new vegas she likes new vegas a lot no i so yeah i get it but she also just like liked the building stuff and i was like "Uh uh-huh i don't get that because i neglected the building stuff and then i also hated that preston you'd like go back to camp you'd like there's another base that needs your help and i'm like what (laughs) i I, I mean i guess and then i realized that that just kept going on forever i was like oh i'm just gonna ignore you now um yeah anyway uh, radiant quests so radiant oh it just like keeps going on forever yeah that was that was a thing they introduced in skyrim i think it's uh, their yep. proce- quote unquote procedurally generated quests, yeah. Uh, essentially, meaning it's a quest, but it it, it just is like a, a Mad Lib. Where it's like yeah. this NPC is your target. Okay. Yeah, and, and uh, like- basically with, with Skyrim, it was always um, you got to go into this cave and like clear out the cave. Yeah, and, and then- or it was like. Like if you're doing the the Dark Brotherhood shit, there were there were radiant quests with them, or like with the Thieves Guild, yeah. And it's just like steal this object or kill this person who is being spawned for the purpose of this mission, <laughs> and like yeah. that was it. Uh, but it yeah, they're they're decent games. I think I just uninstalled um Starfield though. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna play that again. Yeah, um, that one that one's bad. I don't I, think anybody's uh. I don't think you're going to see any any content creators who are like, yeah, Starfield. I'm yeah, sure. I'm going to cosplay my Starfield character. No, no, that's Star Citizen. Uh, but we're going to end the show here. I would like to thank you for being here this week, Aroa. Yeah, I was, yeah, I was here. You showed up. And uh, Connor was going to be here, but then he was playing Civilization VI. And uh, that was a mistake to start a game of Civilization VI before you do anything else for the rest of the day. Uh, and I've been your host, Nathan Reed Spruth. We'll be back next week. Goodbye. Uh.